A botched police raid of an innocent family leads to a woman, nine months pregnant, being shackled to a hospital bed as she goes into labor. And as investigative reporter A.J. Legault reveals, it was all over a mix-up involving a stolen snowblower. How many weeks pregnant are you? 38. A pregnant young woman locked behind bars, sobbing, in pain, confused. I don't know what I did, but why I'm here. And soon will be taken to the hospital in shackles to give birth to her first baby. It's horrific. It's absolutely horrific. What University of Minnesota pediatrics professor Rebecca Schlafer calls horrific, civil rights attorney Nick Sweeney labels. It's completely illegal. What led to this? Even the lawyers involved struggle to explain. <laughs> Well, that's a good question. A Carol Levin investigation discovers the answer is a twisted tale involving a shoplifter, a snowblower, a police raid, and gunfire. It's a story that starts in an unlikely place, the Maple Grove Menards hardware store. Menards notified Maple Grove police that surveillance footage showed a thief stealing off store shelves and returning the stolen goods for store credit. The store credit then used to help buy a snowblower. The snowblower purchase traced back to this Dayton home. Armed with a search warrant, Maple Grove and Dayton police surround the house. One wearing a body mic, but no cameras. Please, search warrant, open the door, please. Please, search warrant, open the door. Inside, Ferris Hussein and wife Sarah, who've asked we not show please their faces. Warrant, Sarah the cooking dinner. Ferris wearing headphones playing computer video games. Open the door. Open the door before I boot it. Just 27 seconds after first knocking, officers kick in the door. Please search warrant. Hope you're all right, Matt. Oh, I got it. Get down. Step over. Later, at the Hennepin County Jail, both Sarah and Ferris gave recorded statements. I was playing games, and then I heard like a smash on the door. That wasn't even, wasn't even enough, like a smash, boom, boom, boom. We were so scared. My husband uh, started to shouting and told me, call the 911, call the 911. I grabbed the gun, and I look, I look. There's a, from the window, I see a guy in civilian clothes. Looks very angry. Ferris says the only person he saw through the blinds was this guy, Maple Grove Detective James Kirky in plain clothes, no police markings. The raid team parked down the street, so there were no police cars in sight. Basically, I had not even 0.01% suspicion that he's a police officer. Thinking it was a home invasion, Ferris, using a legally licensed handgun, fired three times. Warning shots, he says, towards the ground. Shot fired. One out a window and two more through his kicked in door. Shot fired, shot fired. That's Dayton police. Sergeant Greg Burstead fired back. His bullet flew past Ferris, through the home, and into a neighbor's house. Get away from that window, Jimmy. One of Ferris's went through the bottom of Detective Kirky's long coat. 911, let's see how this severe emergency. The panicked couple, still thinking they're being attacked, Call 911. I shot someone and someone shot at me in my home. Hurry up. Yeah, we, yeah, we have people on the way. As officers rush to the scene, those already there call out. Ben, come out of the house with your hands up. This is a stupid search warrant for a snowblower. Come out with your hands up and give us a snowblower and we're good. Hey guys, you're police? Yes. Happy. <laughs> What the f is going on? Well, you're shooting at us. I'm scared to kill us. Yes, because you broke in my house. No, we had a search warrant, like we said. Okay? Search warrant for what? The snowblower, dude, in the garage. A big misunderstanding. Ferris is no thief, just a guy who bought Menard's store credits from an online marketplace to save a few bucks, says criminal defense attorney Dan Guerrero. It's crazy. You got uh, cops coming to a house in plain clothes, pounding on the door breaking in the door in less than a minute. But Ferris was arrested and charged with use of deadly force against peace officers. An engineer, he lost his job as the allegations hung over his head for nearly a year and a half. The prosecution eventually dismissed the charges in May for lack of proof he knew it was the police 
breaking in. You had an innocent client. I had an innocent client. Uh, I had an innocent client. But Ferris wasn't the only one arrested after the snowblower raid. Despite being nine months pregnant, Sarah was taken into custody, kept on what's known as a 36-hour probable cause hold. I don't know what I did, but why I'm here. Uh, so we can fully investigate to determine if a crime was committed. Arresting my client, holding her while she's pregnant, which she did absolutely nothing wrong here, and treating her the way that they did, is completely unjustifiable. Nick Sweeney just filed a federal lawsuit claiming Sarah was denied medical care at the jail for nearly a full day, despite asking to see a doctor because she was in labor. After her water broke and she was taken to HCMC, she was shackled by the leg to the ambulance gurney, to her hospital bed, and when she went to the bathroom, even had both legs shackled together. You're claiming that the sheriff's deputies broke Minnesota law. Absolutely. It's a violation of international laws. It's a violation of human rights. Minnesota law bans restraining pregnant women unless necessary for legitimate safety and security needs. The American Medical Association calls the use of shackling during the birthing process a barbaric practice that needlessly inflicts excruciating pain and humiliation. They're just lucky the baby didn't die or she didn't have some sort of hemorrhage. Professor Schlafer is also research director for the Minnesota Prison Doula Project and was instrumental in advocating the legislature pass the anti-shackling law. She reviewed the case for CARE 11. What was your first thought when you read through this case? My first thought was this is a very clear case in which the law has been violated at, at every turn. In the middle of active labor, Sarah's 36-hour hold was up. The lawsuit says deputies unshackled her and just walked out of the delivery room, leaving her there alone to have her baby. She was never charged with a single crime. Hennepin County Sheriff David Hutchinson refuses to discuss the case, citing the pending litigation, but sent a statement saying they take the allegations seriously and are investigating them. Maple Grove Police Department also declined comment. Wow. It leaves you speechless. I mean, in the middle of the story, said so you feel like there has to be something more. Yeah. And this cannot more all be a over snowblower a snowblower. In the garage. Even if they did <laughs> steal it, there's nothing else there. Wow. The story does keep going on, though. They tried to deport Sarah hmm. after this, claiming she had been charged with firing at the police when, in fact, she was just arrested on a 36 hour hold and never charged. But the family went through hell trying to get that squared away so that Sarah wasn't kicked out of the country because of this.